Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Border Wars. Yes, sir. <laughs> Hashtag TBV Podcast, man. We are back. One week out from fight week. It's going down, and we are live to do our episode of Unguarded, where we sit down and we talk with one of our fighters on this Saturday's cards. None other than Eric Cruz, S O G, Eric Cruz. What's going on, champ? How are you? It's been a minute since you've I'm been doing on the great, hot man. seat, man. Yeah, I don't, you know what? It's, I actually think it's my first on guarded. So mm. yeah, yeah, it's been it's been a minute. Uh, called into the a couple of the Border War show, but yeah, man, it's uh, it's good to experience this uh, first on guarded, man. For sure, for sure. So I guess uh, we want to talk a little bit about all the videos, uh, the the shoulder content that you've been dropping to keep, you know, your your fan base kind of up to date. That everything that everything that is happening with you, man. Uh, just what was uh, I guess some of the thoughts in putting together the the montage videos? You know, you use some specific things there. So wanted to, you know, where'd you get your inspiration from? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, man. The, the whole purpose of uh, me putting that first video, right? It was to take everybody back to the uh, the first time, uh, whenever um, I took my first real loss. I'm gonna say, mm-hmm. um, you know, and I thought there was a loss, right? Um, the whole set fight that was a little bit controversial. Uh, mm-hmm. I give him his credit though, uh, but I wanted to take people back to um, the knockdown, which that knockdown was kind of what changed everything for me because I'd never been dropped, man, in a fight. So for me to be dropped in a fight, it um, and it happened in the the beginning of the other round of the fight, um, it put me in a place to where it got me wondering how good was my chin. Even after the fight, I was still a little bit um, skeptical, you know, as in yo, how good is my chin really? And uh, it set me back, man. I hadn't participated, I haven't still participated since that uh, that one fight. Um, so it set me back. I wanted to remind people that even even if you need some time off, you know to get your thoughts back together um to find that hunger again you know take it um but as long as you you come back and uh, and you look for it um you know you gotta you gotta make it worth your while so so that was the first video and the second video was just a reminder man just a reminder to all these these guys in border wars that i do got power i dropped somebody at heavyweight um so um yeah man i'm i'm back uh, i'm gonna be around i've been around for a while like i said i'm the most active uh, border wars fighter um so yeah man I'm, I'm back and i'm just gonna remind these guys that i that i got power and and i'm a force to be reckoned with Don't hey quick question name uh, for you man yeah i got a question what's going on it's francis all the way from toronto canada listen are you are, are you saying that you you got your bell rung and you needed to wait for for shake out a little bit before you 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 got back in there and, and got back on the bike because you you know we heard um sony who also got his bell rung yeah. He got back in there recently, right, after taking a little bit of a hiatus, and he got back on the horse and started to, you know what I'm saying, to ride again. So uh, um, just talk to us a little bit about that, if you don't mind. Yeah, you, you know what, because that, that weekend was crazy. It was uh, that weekend that I fought Anthony. It was actually the same weekend that um, Anthony uh, Joshua fought uh, Ruiz, right? Right. Uh, where he got caught with a punch similar to the one that I got caught, where it was on the temple. And it just kind of, your legs just, just give out. Um, luckily, I got back up, and I was able to recuperate. Uh, but when I saw the replay, actually, and I saw it recently, because um, I, I did see it when I lost that, that fight. Um, but that same day, I flew out with my family. We had, like, a Disneyland trip. So I didn't pay too much attention to it to it until recently. I watched it in slow motion. As you guys saw it, I posted it on my video. And I saw that that punch, 
it wasn't a punch behind the head, but it was it was a combination of me kind of moving my head and him just catching me at the right place um, that caused kind of you know for me to lose um, to lose kind of like my legs because it was it was weird. I wasn't hurt like you know like that punch. I've been hit harder. It was just at the at the right place. So basically, you're saying it was, you got caught by a lucky punch from the <laughs> gods. <laughs> ah. There you go. It was a unicorn punch, maybe man. Oh wow. <laughs> oh, so he's being trained. So now we're doing unguarded fighter trainer. Okay. Okay. So I wanted to ask you uh, before Francis jumped in, man, uh, you, you, you spoke about stepping away and that fight particularly keeping you away. What exactly kept you away specifically? Like, what do you mean that that fight kept you away? Was it, I mean, the fear of losing again? Was it your the conversation you had to have with your wife and children about doing this again after two losses? What what do you mean it kept you away? And how long exactly? Because I think you're coming up on a year, right? Or more than a year? Yeah, I think I think it's been a year, man. I haven't really done. Uh, I haven't really looked at the calendar as into how long it has been. But yeah, it, it kept me away because I've never, like I said, I've never been dropped in in, in sparring or or you know in a, in a border wars fight. Um, so that that's kind of what kept me away and I didn't want to come back to have uh to have another loss so I kind of wanted to to plan my comeback fight um to make sure that it was something that was that was worth uh me taking um like a Danny the the, the Danny a ring walk Danny fight right it makes sense to me in, in the sense that uh Danny's coming off a win um I know another fight was offered to me with the uh, Sean Jones uh but Sean is coming off a loss no disrespect to him but I'm coming off a loss too right so there's there's um it doesn't make sense for both of us to cancel each other out. Uh, plus, Sean is 6'3", man. If I'm going to fight somebody who's 6'3", I'd rather fight Mr. Gibbs for the IBF title, man. Yeah, I was wondering, yo, Sean is pretty big. You're going to get in there with someone like him. Uh, you got to make sure you got some sort of hardware um, on, on on the line. But uh, Ringwalk Danny, now do you think that Ringwalk is going to put the same type of fight that he put up versus Machine Gun Matt all those years ago in Texas, same hometown arena where you're going to be facing him? I mean, in a way, it seems like that's kind of the, maybe the mentality he's bringing. I haven't seen any any work from him. I haven't seen any training. I haven't seen any sparring from him. Um, on his Facebook, I kind of caught a little bit of him working out with a pro. Um, but we're, we're ready for both. If you know, if he wants to bring that, that same kind of fight, um, you know, the, the brawler, or if he wants to all of a sudden learn how to box, you know, we, we're ready for, for that too. Oh, I love the way you put that in there. Let me jump in there real quick there, Ness, because, you know, I mean, I, I, I got to get to Mr. SOG himself here. You, you know, give us a little take on um, um, what kind of uh, what kind of training do you do for this training camp versus the last two training camps or the last training? Let's go with the last training camp that you had. What, what have you done differently in this camp in terms of your, um, your, your uh, workouts? My workouts, well, they have changed uh, due to COVID. You know, I'm working from home now. So I get to sneak in little workouts like during my lunch. I can I can uh, do a little session with Mitty. Um, they're, they're short. But so what man, do, what would those cons- those sessions consist of? If you don't mind me asking, is it consist of like um, uh, explosion? Is it consist of cardio? Like what did it consist? Weights push? Like what are they consist of? Yeah, it's, it's a little bit of um, high intensity interval training, a little bit of that, and also a little bit of uh, shadow boxing, a little bit of uh, explosive uh, training, like you were mentioning. Uh, so it's a little bit of everything with those. Awesome. Go ahead, Ness. Well, uh, you know, I, I wanted to know more about uh, opponent selection. Uh, like you said, you didn't choose Sean for reasons you just mentioned about coming off a loss. Uh, you wanted Enrique, though. And obviously, you know, guys like Jose. I think, if I'm not mistaken, you might have even told me the rematch with Ant. I'm not sure. I feel like Ant is the one that didn't want to do that rematch uh, I feel like he mentions your power whenever the rematch is brought up. Like, oh, you know, I don't want to fight Cruz. He hits hard uh, and kind of laughs it off. Yeah. How difficult was it for you to not only find an opponent but make the decision on this particular person, Daniel Alvarez, a.k.a. Ringwalk Danny from Las Vegas? Yeah, well, it came down to a couple of opponents, right? There was also uh, Robert Ortiz, um, who hasn't he hasn't fought, but he's always wanted to fight. So how serious was that? Because, uh, like you said, he hasn't fought, but he always wanted to fight, and it just seems like no one can actually get this guy in the ring. Um, it was it was pretty serious. Um, I was uh, I was talking to him 
Um, I was talking to Eddie, who you know, who um, BDG, who's uh, supposedly his his manager, and it was it was pretty serious. But it got down to the point where I was um, I, I had talked to him, and you had mentioned up uh, Danny as well. And I reached out to Danny, and Danny right away without hesitating, he's like, "Yeah, let's do this." Um, so I reached out back to Ortiz, and Ortiz was like, "Well, I have options," and you know how he is when he he becomes a diva. So I was like, "You know what? I'm gonna go with Danny just because I, I just feel like you're gonna make it impossible to." So, so fight. because Danny said yes so quick, I, to me it seems that he might be looking at you a little bit like a cherry. With the, oh. with the quick response, like the, like the quick trigger off the draw, like, oh, you want to fight me? Yeah, 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 I want to fight you. Like, he didn't even get a chance to finish the sentence. He already, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Well, I mean, I am coming off with two laws. You know, some people might might see me as a cherry. So if, if he does, you know, then, hey, I welcome him. Man. Wow, hey, really? Hey, let, me, let me ask you a quick question with regards to preparation, right? So a lot of the people out there came and talked about, like, fighters' sacrifices and all that, yeah? And yesterday was Thanksgiving, man. So, uh, what was the impact of that celebration on your diet and your preparation? Just being like a week away, and knowing that you have to make weight. So, what kind of sacrifices have you had to make for Thanksgiving? Or were you okay and you could just eat whatever you wanted? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not okay to be able to eat whatever <laughs> I want because uh, I do love food, right? I, I know a lot of people say that they love food, but but with me, like. Well, me and my wife, right? We're we love food. Um, we love food so much that we have we have gone to Vegas um, because she's been craving a restaurant, and we've flown back the same day uh, just uh, just to try that food that, that she wanted. You know, I'm on that um, type of time too, Eric. Damn. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, he's so, a, so, he, you're a bowler as well. Hell yeah, you're bowlers a bowler. do things like that. Man. You want to have dinner in Vegas, baby? Let's go. I love it. <laughs> nah, man. You know how they say, "Happy wife, you know, happy life." So, um, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, but it's, it's been tough. It's been tough. Um, yesterday, I did. I'm not gonna lie. I did have some Thanksgiving um, uh, food, uh, but it wasn't uh, what I usually do. It was it was like uh, half of the portion that I usually get, and I actually uh, spend it at home with uh, with uh, my wife and my daughter. So it's I never it's been understood tough. that though. I never understood like it's Thanksgiving. You're on a diet. It doesn't mean you can't eat. It's all about portion size. It's like. The meat, right. the meat for Thanksgiving doesn't all of a sudden get any more fattening or less fattening. Actually, turkey is healthier than most meats. It's, it's processed yeah, better. It's indulgence, right? So yeah, you, but... you know that those, you know, those days like Thanksgiving, Christmas, you overindulge because you got to loosen the belt a little bit. After you have you people <laughs> around you, right? Like exactly. you, you feel like you have to eat everything that's on the table, right? So. It's funny, yeah, man. No. I, I literally had one plate yesterday. Yeah, my girl loaded it up with a little bit of everything, but I left a lot. Like, I, she put, like, four chicken wings, left those there. I didn't touch that. I'm a ham, you know, like ham, turkey, some arroz and guandula. So what did you, what was on your plate? What did you allow yourself to eat? Any carbs on that plate for Thanksgiving, or did you also, you know, just eat, like, meat and vegetables? Uh, no, I didn't eat meat and vegetables. I mean, well, potato is a vegetable, right? So I guess I had some some vegetables. I had some potatoes in there. Okay. Um, but I had some hey. a little bit of mac and cheese, a little bit of turkey, <laughs> ham. Oh, so you oh, had some get him, coach. Cheese. Get him, coach. You had some it, mac it, it and cheese. He didn't tell me all that. You know, he didn't tell me all that. He told me, <laughs> he, he told me something about sweet potato. To get start him, coach. I was like, okay, that's all right. <laughs> and then he, now he says potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Something like that. You know, potato is the cousin of sweet potato, man. So oh, okay. <laughs> so so what kind, what type of music do you listen to when you're training? Um, when you're running or when you're working out, that gives you motivation or calms you down or whatever. R- them long yeah. runs, man. You've been doing a lot of miles for this camp too, man. Touch on that. Uh, yeah, I, I don't really uh, listen to music that much. What I do listen to is like sermons uh, or I listen to the Boxing Boys podcast. Those are the two things that I listen to when. And kind of keep me focused and, and on what I want to do. Okay. Wow. And, and 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 how how many miles do you think you put in for? The, I mean, I know you don't have to think because you actually have it tracked both with Apple Watch and Matt My Fitness. So how many miles you put in for this camp? Hmm. Uh, I would probably say between 30, 30 and forty, which which is kind of the norm. Um, I did do I think the most in one week. Uh, this time I, I did t- uh, twenty miles in one week uh, when I did the the coach midi challenge. I'm gonna call it that. Um, so yeah, I've I've been running a lot, but uh, I've been trying to focus more on those uh, hit workouts. I noticed that they kind of um, increase my heart rate uh, to a different yes. level than than running does. So um, 
yeah, it's 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 been good. You know, uh, Coach Doomy used to live by those hit workouts. He felt like um, the high intensity training replicated the heart rate in the ring. Now that you're getting a lot more frequent sparring from when you first became a Border Wars fighter, do you agree with that? Do you think that the hit training helps you more in terms of stamina in the ring? Yeah, I, I do agree with it because I noticed that my cardio went up like in two weeks. It just went up by a lot, like a lot. Like I, I've been uh, training with Chach and I've been kind of shadowing his workouts. You know, he has that amateur experience. Um, so he also kind of gives me tips on what he does. Um, so I've been shadowing some of his workouts and we do time our workouts. Uh, so at the beginning, whenever I started, I kind of noticed what I was able to do. And now I'm like com- almost twice as that uh, as my time has gotten better. Let me ask you a question. When you're running, oh, sorry, did you have a follow up? No, no, no. no what, Just when you're running, I love you that eat, he, you know, is, you, is, is recording everything. I think that's important. Okay. Um, when you're running, do you increase your speed, the pace at which you run um, as your miles uh, accumulate? Yeah, it, it depends what I'm doing, right? Whenever I'm doing like long distance, um, I try to focus on my time, uh, not as much. Uh, but whenever I'm doing, um, for example, Coach Mitty has me running three miles as fast as I can. So in those days, yeah, I definitely look at my time. I uh, try to beat my time every time. So yeah, the reason why I, the, reason, the reason why I asked you that because um, um, I know you said you know when you're running, it gets your heart rate up, and I feel like whenever I'm running, I try to uh, as much as possible push the time, push the name the time, but push myself. Like I know when my heart rate is being raised, I can feel it in my body as I'm moving and my legs are moving. I try to like sprint either out the last mile. You know, next time I might sprint the last 1.2 miles, but eventually I'm trying to sprint the whole thing. Like I'm trying to get at my optimum speed mm-hmm. as if I was on the treadmill. But like, I just wanted to ask you because uh, this different because soccer is different. But that's just right, like right. some of my soccer training. I just wanted to get your take on um, the hit training because hit training is very, very, very good. And I'm glad that you you implement it because those two minute rounds um, are, are going to go fast, right? They go fast. Yeah. So so yeah, Cruz, yeah. what what is the I guess what's the plan because you I don't know I, I, I feel like you well I guess I guess at one point you fought for the world title right because I, I feel like you're fluctuating so many different ways do you have a you know like like your 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 your, your stable mate you know he's starting to yeah. become this blue chipper you know uh Marvin he he started at 240 now we know him as this 185 fighter and now he's even throwing out in the universe 175. Do you have a division that you want to take over, or are you just kind of Canelo-ing, looking for the biggest fight <laughs> in depending the division? Because I know you fought a heavyweight once, then right. you, you you know you're willing to fight Robert Ortiz. So it's like, are you just looking for the biggest fight, and no division really matters to you? What's what's the goal? Yeah, the the end goal is obviously um, what has always been for me in Border Wars, which is to lose weight, right? Um, so. I'm also getting at that point where I'm kind of noticing um, that we have new talent coming in, right? And these guys have amateur backgrounds, and uh, they're really good. So, so yes, uh, the goal is to lose weight and also um, kind of Canelo it, like like you mentioned it, and uh, just pick the biggest fights. Because um, th- there's some guys coming in that they're 0-0, and, and they're really good. Um, <laughs> so just based on the records, I can't pick those guys for me to fight. You know, I, I do have more experience than they do in Border Wars, uh, so I kind of have to, yeah, pick my fights. It sounds more like uh, inside the ring, more like the, the Adrian Broner route. Like you know, outside the ring, you're a very different character. But inside the ring, like you were, you started off like your border was career as being one of the top fighters, winning everything. Now yeah. you just like you know, you you faced a little bit of adversity, but now you're back on it, right? Just going back into your weight loss journey and trying to get the, the biggest fights. That that looks like a. Uh, uh, Broner roadmap to me, man. Bro- <laughs> I, I don't oh, know. Man, I, don't I don't like the Broner. Yeah, right, Cruz? I don't, I don't like the Broner analogy, man. Uh, hey, he still gets the big fights, man. He's still a big name. Like, that's what Cruz is, man. Like, no, a big and, name in, in there, man. And, and that from that true. aspect, absolutely. But, but, but Broner's losing those big fights. I want to see Cruz, <laughs> you know, win those big fights, man. He so, will do it. Uh, I know probably they're going to ask you this in, uh, in in your unguarded questions, but I want to ask, man, uh, politics aside, what's your next three? Who you want? 
Oh, well, I, I got to win this one, right? I got to focus on this one. But my next three um, would probably be... I want Keem. Whoa! I, Keem. Um, I, I wouldn't say Jose because he's retired. Um, Enrique is retired too. Um, so I'm going to say Keem. I want my rematch with Ant. I got to get that back. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Sal. <laughs> Yeah, you know, that's a good three fight wish list. Yeah, that's a good three fights, man. I'm not looking for tune ups, you know. I'm looking for and and I picked those three guys just because I feel they're they're good, you know. I feel no, I feel they're real good. Yeah. They'll challenge me. Those are good and, fights. Um, I, I like. I'm. I have a nonstop smile. Those are good, good fights. I don't know that I would been a, would have been a, a, as excited had you said Jose and Enrique and then Keem, you know? Maybe I would have still been happy, like, oh, all right. Because I know Enrique is a big puncher. I kind of always wanted that matchup between you and him. I know you've been chasing him, and he kind of sees you as this little guy. But I yeah. kind of see you I kind of see you as way more skilled than Enrique. Like, I think what Enrique has over you is going to be weight and power. But can, yeah. he, can, <laughs> can he put it together on weight. you? Hey, he's he's pretty heavy. I mean, I get you, but you're shorter, right? What are you, the five six, five seven? You like Mario, no? Yeah. yeah. yeah so like Enrique, Enrique's your weight, but then he's he's tall, man. He's like five, good five ten, six feet on a good day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's he, what he, he, he just has no head movement, man. But yeah, <laughs> hey. I hear you. You're right. Oh, no, no he's right. Movement. He's right. He's right. He's yeah. right. He's got that bobblehead head movement, man. <laughs> I can't wait to meet everybody down there. Yeah. So, wow. Okay, that's a great three-fight fight plan. Wow. Wow, that means, you know what? Man, man, Keem might, I, yeah, you guys might fight sooner than later, man. That's And you know what? Two guys that definitely will show up, so there will be no risk of, of, of last, you know, last week pullouts. But go ahead, Mitty. Yeah. Which one out of those three is the, the most challenging to you, right? Who, who do you think is going to give you the toughest test? Um, honestly, I think probably Ant will. Well, see, that's a tough question to answer because I, I think Ant, um, only because he's uh, he's uh, he's a more athletic guy and he has a weird um, fighting stance. Um, so I would say Ant, but at the same time, I do have that advantage that I already know what to expect from him. Um, but I'm still going to stick with Ant only because he's getting surgery and he might come out as a new man. You never know. <laughs> Do okay. you think okay. do you think he comes back though? I mean, Ant has been gone for a while himself, right? Like I mean, I guess he has that one more fight than you, but it's been since his loss to Marvin. And even before that, he was kind of you know, he's only got three fights. Well, yeah, but if you remember he was back on this last border wars, it's just his opponent I think pulled out. Um, no, 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 no. He pulled out and on this injury. One. And, 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 and injury. Had three no, no, not injuries. this one, the Pittsburgh one. Didn't he yes, show up to Pittsburgh? Sonny. Sonny. Uh, yeah, he showed up. Sonny pulled out. You're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so he's 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 at, at, at is one of the guys that I respect a lot because that's the second one that he shows up to where his opponent doesn't show up yeah. and he continues to participate. So right, I, got I much agree, love Grant, man. Yeah. Well, I think we're just saying that you know he's got a lot of wear and tear on his body and we don't know if he can hold up like a, a full training camp, you know, without. Say picking up an injury, right? But hey, yeah. I, I hope he can. I'm sure he'll show up. And you know, you, yeah. you're right. That's probably one of the toughest fights. You know, so yeah. he's gonna be like Kell Brook, man. He's gonna have all kind of metal body parts. <laughs> he's a broken man. <laughs> he he's already a got man. a. Go. They, they they changed it in his Achilles with with some rubber bands and shit. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> some resistant bands or something like that. Yeah. So, Cruz, man, I, I, I got to ask you, man, even though this is now going to be your fifth. Actually, let's talk about that, man. Let's talk about the fact that, you know, it, 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 it pains me to say it, honestly. You know, yeah. not, not, not with any jealousy or anything like that, but I, I wanted to accomplish that. I wanted to achieve that, and that's why I'm hoping to get four fights next year. But you are, with this fight, going to be the most active fighter in Border Wars. And again... I'm saying that with a huge smile. Um, I don't know. It, was that by design? Is it coincidental? Uh, talk to me. Yeah, no, not not at all. It's not it's not coincidental. It, it is by design, man. I, lo I love this Border Wars. I've always loved to fight. Um, I love the competition and I love the motivation. Uh, whenever I get a fight, you know, it motivates me to go to the gym, start working out, start hitting the heavy bag. 
Um, so I love I love Border Wars. Um, so that's just every time that there's one, I've always tried to push myself to join to join one, even when it's been impossible to do it. Um, like the last one, my wife was like right about to you know give birth. Um, well, not the not the last one in Pittsburgh, but the one in Dallas. Um, we were um, my first uh, boy was going to be bo- born like I think a week before or after, and I was still trying to join Border Wars. Right, I, last minute I decided to pull it out. Um, but yeah, I just I just love it, man. I love the the camaraderie. I love meeting new people. Um, so yeah, I, I just love the whole the whole um, environment, the whole experience. Um, I love it, man. Do you consider yourself right now, like if 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 you won this last fight versus ringside, and you're like, you know what, I'm hanging it up. Do you think your first ballot Border Wars Hall of Fame? Oh, for sure, man. No doubt. Oh, no doubt. Talk that mess. No doubt, man. Talk I'm that one the, mess. I'm one of the first ones. I'm one of the first ones, man. Um, yeah, people people kind of forget sometimes my whole history of Border Wars, right? Yes. Like my first Border Wars, I showed up. I didn't have an opponent. I didn't know who I'm fighting with. All of a sudden, it's like, hey, you're fighting this amateur guy who, by the way, just stopped somebody in, in the second round. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, you got to fight him next, you know? So With no so, mouthpiece. Yeah, this- and you've got to add, he's not turned pro. He's actually now a pro yeah. fighter. So you have you yeah. have a win over a pro fighter. Yeah, man. yeah. the guy that you beat, yeah, yeah. your first uh, Border Wars, is now a pro fighter. And you guys yeah, are friends on Facebook. Do you, give, do you give him like a standing eight count or something? Definitely like, like a standing eight, right? I remember you really hurting him. With some of the yeah. other hands. I, I, I think you went to the. I think you just went to the judges. Okay. Back then, and then my, my second fight was versus Sack. You know the guy that you. You took three rounds. I finished them in two, you know? Oh, okay. I, 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 yo, he's a writer. You know? He's a boxing writer. You see how he said that? The guy, I took three rounds. Yeah, hey, he finished your dinner for you because you played with your Brad, food. There was, no context. <laughs> there was no context in that statement. Everybody knows that should have been stopped. Kevin tell him, Cun- tell him, Cruz, you played with his food and you had Ke- to finish it for him. Kevin Cunningham, yeah, Kevin Cunningham cheated for Zach, man. Come on. They we don't get paid for overtime there. over here, man. No, I hear you. Listen, you a killer. You a killer, man. You a killer. No, and that's why nice. I wanted you to kind of say, you know, who you've been in with, right? Because, you know, I, I, I can paint a more dangerous picture. It's like you go in there with a guy you don't know. He won a WBC a amateur tournament. He won a TMT amateur tournament. You know, and, and, and before he faces you, he stops Shandu. You know, you get in there, you beat this amateur who turns around and, and, and becomes a pro. You know, um, then, you know, after that, it's like you said, you fight one of my opponents at heavyweight. So you move up to heavyweight just to get a fight. After that, you go on in a unification, right, with Jose. Well, Jose, right. Did he have both belts or you came in there with the ring? I had the ring uh, belt okay. and he had the, the miniature WBC belt. So what, so what <laughs> happened in that one, man? What hap- so what happened Shot, in that one? Shots case? fired. He no, took but, your belt, so you can't really call it I, miniature because he took your belt. Ooh. He, he took my belt, but I took his career, man. He hasn't fought since then. True. Ooh. You sound like Danny and Thurman right now. But didn't he fight? So you, so he fought you after he he got DQ'd against crew against uh, Enrique. Yeah, 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 yeah. He hasn't fought since then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You sent him into retirement, I see. But that's what uh, I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. But think about it. Think about it, uh, Francis. All big fights, right? So he fought. Jose from Canada, and that's mm-hmm. why Francis is sticking up because they're Canadians. But he fought Jose yeah, from, okay, from from Canada that. for the <laughs> for the unification. Ne- ne- hey, Ness, stop putting words in my mouth. I keep telling you what stop you putting words, words in my mouth, man. Ain't you from Canada? <laughs> yeah, but who's right. sticking up for him though? Oh, Damn, uh, it, it sound like it sound like you did. You like, he took your belt. He took your belt, Canada. But he did take the belt though. That's facts. And then you yeah, said, I, "Oh, I, Canada," you know. So listen. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. So, after that unification, you had another unification, right? Or was it a vacant title shot and, once again, Jose kind of intervened? You were supposed to be fighting Ant for the vacant straps that were stripped from Jose in New Jersey when you fought Ant, right? Yeah, it was something like that, man. Um, I forgot exactly what happened, but, yeah, it was something like that. I was supposed to fight Ant for, um, for I think it was a unification, a mandatory shot. I forgot exactly what it was. But all big fights because Ant at the time when you faced him was two and zero oh, maybe yeah he was two and zero oh. or I mean, one and zero oh, right one and zero oh, you were a second fight then Marvin third fight so he was one and zero oh, uh, when yeah. you faced him but considered one of the most dangerous for sure 
you know. Um, and that was another big fight. Like I said, it was either I know it should have been for the belts. We, we, we know that's why yeah. we had a little bit of a fallout with Jose, but so it should have been for the belts. So all your fights kind of have been significant ones. Now uh, you're taking on Ringwalk Danny. How do you think that he, he I guess, uh-huh. differs from any of your other past opponents? Great question. Um, he differs in the, in the, in the way that I, I don't have much footage on him, right? Um, even in his first board of wars, there, there wasn't any of him training. So he's, he's more like a brawler. I guess he's, uh, relying on his talent or maybe just trying to work behind the scenes and not, um, let me know exactly what he's doing. So I guess that's, that's the only difference about him that other than his fight, which doesn't really give me much, um, uh, to go off of, uh, because his, uh, his opponent kind of determines a lot on how he fought. Um, so yeah, it, it doesn't give me a lot to go off of, but um, th- that would be the only difference. Are you expecting the the, the best ring walk, Danny? Seeing that uh, he hopefully he'll come in, um, not expecting you to perform the same during your loss, but to be a better you. Yeah, I'm, I'm expecting the best. I got to expect the best ring walk, Danny. Right? I can't I can't assume that he's uh, he's not working out. Uh, so I'm expecting him to come in the the best shape that uh, he's been, or at least the best shape we can get in six weeks. And and I'm gonna give the best of me. Okay, uh, you know what? You're doing better than your coach. Mitty's your coach, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're doing better than your coach because all he's doing is fighting inactivity. So it's all good. Fighting inactivity. Oh, man, he, he gets a couple of bye weeks, man. He's got, <laughs> he's got a couple of big wins. He gets bye weeks. He, he, he's taking a speed, man. That pound for pound list got cobwebs because of Mitty over there. But go on, Kuz. It's about you, Kuz. Yo, go ahead, you, Kuz. you 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 could only hope to get on the list, man. You're a good talker. I, I know, I know, pound I know. for pound yeah, talker right here. We got, we got Dennis in Tampa who says, how do you relate your calling to serve God with your calling to box? Do they clash as in you don't want to hurt anyone or do they complement each other? If so, how? Thanks. Much respect. Champion Dennis in Tampa. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good question um, because a girl, growing up, I've always loved boxing, but you know, due to my parents being pastors, they kind of frowned upon it. Um, so I never got to get into sport until I was, you know, older, kind of out of my house. Um, and decided to choose my own things. Um, and then, and I got, I got into boxing then, um, thanks to you guys also, you know, because I've, I've been a long time listener to the Boxing Boys. And um, it does, it doesn't con- conflict with each other, right? Because um, yes, Border Wars is about fighting each other. Right. Um, but it's also about uh, creating a community uh, and a, a group of friends, a group of brothers uh, behind the scenes that that I, I love. And honestly, um, it's it's kind of a getaway for me every now and then. Um, you know, I'm human just like everybody else. And sometimes I need to reach out to people that maybe don't look at me in that um, spiritual level uh, where somebody from the church would um, and can kind of give me a different um, point of view. So that's uh, that's how um it, it works in my favor. And also, you know, I've, I feel like uh, f- people feel um, uh, they feel free to reach out to me whenever they're going through something. And, and, and that's what I'm here for, you know. So I'm glad I help people out. And I'm also uh, I love it whenever I can use it as an escape to kind of communicate with other people in the, in the Border Wars family. We got uh, Tony Yoka's little brother who says <laughs> Jesus was a cheek turner. Is that part of the game plan? Ha <laughs> ha! Only messing around. Uh, on a serious yeah. note, did you always have your eyes set on ring side, Danny? Or is he hey. that innocent bystander who has to pay for the damage caused to your reputation by Ant and Jose? I, I'm not going to say I've always had my eyes set on him, but he's been one of the opponents that I've always wanted to get in the ring with, kind of like Enrique, kind of like Jose and Sal. And all those guys, um, none of those other guys were available. Um, so that's why I'm fighting a uh, ringside. But um, uh, if he's, is he going to be an uh, innocent bystander? I, I don't think he's going to be innocent, but we'll see. <laughs> we got Ambrose in Texas who says, who are some of the fighters you are influenced by or like to base your style on? Best of luck to you and your opponent. Blessings. Um, the fighters that I, that I like, right. Is, uh, like triple, I love triple G. Everybody know that's, uh, I'm a huge, a triple G fan. I try to make it out to most of his fights if I can. Um, I, I like Canelo style as well. Um, you, you could say I like the uh, brawlers. Uh, I like Wilder, you know, for that reason, just cause he has that power. Yeah. Boxing is beautiful. 
Mayweather and all that stuff is good. But I, I like to see knockouts. I like to see, um, you know, action. So, um, yeah, those are some of the guys. I like AJ as well, man. He's, he's got power. Oh, so you like the guys with power? Yeah, there you go. I like the guys with power, not the I guys who kind of like to, to move and dance too much. So I he, see, so he don't see. like you, champ. Uh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> yo, and by, <laughs> and by champ, I'm talking to Mitty. Ah! Nah, you got it. Yeah, Mitty? Oh, yeah. I, I got nothing to say. Yo, that's what Doomy says. Mitty, Mitty, Doomy calls him pillow fisted, man. Yo. Nah, I've been in the ring with Mitty. He's got power. Nah, I know he does. I seen, I seen Sal's face. Um, <laughs> real real Naja chick. I thought you performed brilliantly against Anthony Edwards. Coming back from that knockdown, you won the next two rounds on my card. Are you interested in that rematch, or do you have your sight set on others? If so, who? Oh, shout out to Real Naja Chick. That's my that's my friend right there. Um, yeah, I, of course, of course, I want the rematch with that. Right? Um, he's he's not at a hundred percent right now, and whenever he is, you know, we can we can. We can discuss that. And I, also, I got to be at 100%. Like, um, the way that I took this fight on a six weeks uh, notice, and I had some, you know, personal um, issues uh, going on with, with my side of the family, um, I got to be at 100%. I can't take a uh, a fight with Ant, you know, kind of at a mediocre camp. So I got to be at my best. Oh, but yeah, we gotta run that back. wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait so a minute. Add, so let me ask you. Okay, oh, 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 champ. Oh. So... Are you trying to say this is a mediocre camp and uh, Ringwalk Danny is actually a COVID fight? Are you Daniel Jacobs, Gabriel Rosado? Like, this is the perfect fight to come out of COVID? Uh, um, yeah, I mean, no. I'm saying Ant isn't that. That's what I'm saying. Ant is not a, a Ringwalk Danny. That's what I'm saying. Wow. So, Ringwalk Danny, you could beat in six weeks. Ant, you need a full camp. I mean, Ann's got more experience, right? Ann has three fights. Ringwalk only has one. So, you know, that, that should kind of tell you um, who would I need more experience with also in the, in the, in the gym. Definitely, definitely. Hey, man. Just wanted you to make sure You guys always say, it. right? It's, it's about situation and circumstances, man. Like, so, yeah, man. Yeah. I, I see what he's saying. No, no, no. Me too. But, you know, I had to paint the picture for the listener that may not be able to connect those dots. Not everyone knows. Everyone's... Uh, schedule and resume and i just want to make sure that they understand that he's letting us know um the ring walk danny is per- a perceived COVID fight it's kind of like what daniel jacobs did on the you know press conference with him and gabe rosado he's like gabe rosado is the perfect fight to be coming out of COVID with you know and then i look for a title shot so i'm assuming after this you're looking for bigger fights like you said earlier in the interview nothing wrong with that listen yeah. this is boxing not everybody can be a world champion and not everybody can be a contender. Um, you know, it's up to Danny to prove you wrong because you're the one underestimating him, if anything. Not underestimating like that, but what yeah. I mean is you're the one saying you can beat him in six weeks. We got another one from Jimmy D. Hello, Jose. first. Jose, okay. <laughs> Jose. Yeah, yeah, that's Jose's undercover account, but go ahead, my bad. Oh, I mean, uh, I don't know. It's been he's been a He's been a Patreon for... Two months. Two months. Two months. <laughs> two okay. Months. Two months. Um, but Jimmy go D ahead, says, hello, first of all, I am a big fan of yours as a person and a boxer. My question is this, the following. After hearing the ridiculous excuses of Wilder, are you embarrassed as a man for not admitting the Canadian Jose beat you? The excuses and not admiring you... I guess he's meant to put your loss is the same as Wilder, not admitting defeat and not giving true credit is akin to not accepting reality. Best of luck with your tune up fight with that silly opponent. Well, I thought he said it was your friend. Um, yeah, I guess that's that, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's Jose. Um, that's definitely who is that question. Let me, let me answer that question, right? The <laughs> difference between Wilder and I, right, is nobody thought Wilder won that fight. Um, so, so he has all these reasons on, on why he think he won that fight. And I'm talking about Wilder. Um, and the difference between me and Jose is there's plenty of people who, who thought I won that fight. I haven't even brought that fight up again. You know, like I, I told Jose, you know, I, he's got the W over me. I'll give him that. Um, I only bring it up whenever he tries to, to rub it in my face to say that he beat me, 
uh, from pillar to post, which which never happened. So that's the only time I'll address that fight. But I'll give Jose his his credit um, that he beat me. He has the W over me. That's fine. All right. Uh, we have Eddie Bola de Grasa, Nevarez, out of uh, Las Vegas. Team captain out there. He says, uh, what up, legend? You've been a part of Border Wars since the beginning. Tell me, how do you feel about how much it has grown, not only in popularity, but in competition? Do you find motivation in the levels going up or feel like you're in over your head like a certain Canadian friend we all know. Good luck, man. Oh, man, I'm I'm definitely proud at um, I'm, to see how Border Wars has uh, has grown right from the beginning to now. We had very uh, few weight classes. Now we have plenty of them. You know, we have a lot of people joining in. Um, I think when for this card, when it originally got announced, it was like 10 fights. Um, so that's huge. Um, back then, when we first started, it was... It was like maybe four fights and uh, there wasn't even a way in so it has grown tremendously um i have seen the level of competition grow like uh, bdg says but no it, it's definitely motivation uh, it's motivation to me to see marvin um how he started with me you know uh, sparring um in the backyard going to parts and stuff like that and look at marvin now he's you know going to r&r um sparring pros and and he's definitely getting bigger man so so that's definitely huge motivation so, so I have a, a question on that front, man. Like, what's going on when you're sparring Marvin right now? Like, who who gets the upper hand? Oh, it's always. Uh... <laughs> oh, man, Why are you getting oh, all cheeky? Oh, he started and started. Why are you getting all cheeky oh. over there? It's it, me. It, see, the thing with me and Marvin is we we know we sparred so many times that we know each other's um, uh, weakness, I guess. So you did, could say did, we kind of know each other. Did he try to hit you with his little special move he's practicing? You seen his little? No, he didn't. He ain't trying to combo try to hit me on with you. A special move. He tried to hit me with an uppercut that I was like, "Bro, you trying to get a highlight out of me?" Or what's going on? <laughs> here, man? I was like, he, missed me. he missed me with it, but I'm like, "Whoa, you trying to hold my head there? What's going on? You trying to get a highlight out of me?" But um, no. In all seriousness, his, his cardio is, is way better than than before. Like I I got in the ring with him, and yeah, his his cardio from his previous um, border wars is ten times better. Yeah, I mean, he said he was doing, like, six rounds the other day or something, like, crazy like that, man. Uh, yeah. you, you guys were the first one, like, in Border was one, right? You guys were the ones, like, uh, sparring in the grass, right? Yeah, you were joking yeah. about that, right? Like, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, that was us. Uh, you yeah. used to beat Marvin, I remember. Like, you know, I remember the sparring. I thought, like, you know, you, you were the one with the, the little edge on it. Like, I don't know. That's yeah. why I wanted to know what's going on now. Mm. Uh, I'll, send you, I'll send you some clip later, man. Ah! <laughs> oh! Uh oh, uh oh. No, no, man. They gonna it's, say it's they all, gonna all, say they stable mates. Jamal, and you know Janelle. what I'm saying? Yes. Later. It's Jam- good word, this man. is it's Laura, 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 and Jamal. They they can't fight. They trained by Ronnie. Yo, um, yeah. uh oh. Anthony Edwards comes in. Actually, it's Big Supermax first who says, uh, "What's up, champ? Thanks for always being a supporter and a motivator of me." And my brother, we are looking forward to getting the stoppage win over Danny. My question is. What would you like your future to be in Border Wars? Much love, brother, Four Horsemen. Man, my, my future in Border Wars, first of all, shout out to Supermax. Um, you know, I've always uh, tried to try to motivate him. Just cause, the same way, you know, I got people that motivate me, like Coach Mitty. You know, he's, he stays on me. Um, so the, the future that I want uh, for me to be in Border Wars is, is kind of as a team captain, right? Yeah, I want to fight, uh, but I love to get other people and involved with the whole with the whole process and for other people to experience what I experience with it and, and for them to enjoy the benefits of it and uh, for them to see kind of what it's done for me. Um, I, I'm kind of doing that with Chach, uh, where he's he's new to the whole Border Worlds um, environment, and I think that he's enjoying it as much as he is because I kind of fill him in into what does it bring and, and the whole uh, Border Wars community, so... So yeah, that's my outlook on it. Jumping in again, like so, w- what is your view on chat? Right, so obviously you're training with him, yeah. you've had like a little bit of sparring with him. Are you impressed? And you know what you think of his chances in his own fight? I know that's your own border wars, but it's it's interesting. We want to get the insight from the yeah. from the camp stable and mate. for stable mate knowing each other, right? So yeah, no, no, it's my own guarded, but. Every time I join Border Wars, man, is to see other fights as well, right? Um, so yeah, uh, in regards to Chach, he's 
he's good, man. Like, he's one of the guys that I've gotten in the rings with, and I'm like, he's shown me a different level. Like, Marvin has shown me a different level in his cardio, right, which, which is good, but Chach has shown me a different level in regards to skills. Um, I had sparred him for, like, maybe, like, eight rounds, uh, but at the beginning, he, um, like, in one round, he gave me, like, five different styles, and I could tell he was doing it on purpose, right, to, to throw me off my game plan. And uh, he finished the round with my own style, which was crazy to me. Like, nobody fights me with my own style. So, what, yeah, he's, what, he's Wait, good. wait, wait. What you mean by your own style? What did he do? So, he he went all out in the last round? He turned it up? What did he do? No. Well, the, the way that I fight is I kind of put my left hand down and I keep my other hand up, right? And he came, he approached me with that same style. And he was touching me up. Mm. So, it was like, okay. So, he, he can do what I can do. And... um He's a great guy. Like a lot, of, he was teaching me a lot of stuff too, right? Like, hey, you could do this and this better. Uh, not a lot of people do that in sparring. Uh, they're trying to see how they can um, they can improve themselves. And uh, Chats was uh, was opposite. He was uh, he was giving me a lot of tips. So he's uh, he's he's really good, man. I'm really excited to see that fight just because I know Sean um, is skilled. But man, uh, Chats is he's up there, man. He's up there. I said that the minute I seen that sparring. I seen how he was like on the tippy tippy toes, how he could switch yeah. styles, how he was so you could see the confidence, you know. He conserves and, his energy very well. Yeah, um, he's fighting Sean, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that Sean, should be a good I hope, fight. I hope Sean comes prepared. You know, I think the the, the Sean's downfall is he, he he trains himself. That's what I remember yeah. from the first fight. I remember seeing you know um, his brother doing pad work with him. I know that he got to go and spar JD, and I think JD was going to help him this time again. So hopefully, you know, that's the case so that they can be prepared. Team Texas is growing, though. Wow. I mean, you it talked is. about you talked about being kind of like a captain in the future. Talk about how big. <laughs> Yo, it's a lot of people in Texas. A lot of, lot of fighters from Texas, man. A lot of fighters from it Texas. Is. It is. And we just got, a, we just got a Kendrick on board. I was texting, yeah. texting him the other day. You know, I'm actually to, mad about that. I'm actually mad about that because right away we finally got a new heavyweight. You know, he's got all these muscles. I'm like, all right, this is my guy. Now you guys are going to be teaching him, you know, little secrets and even so telling what? Him, yeah, yeah. So and even, what? And even telling him little secrets. You know what quack, I mean? Quack, quack. Yeah. Like yeah, I got like, yeah, I got like yeah, eight yeah. rounds on that. So whenever he came to Dallas, man, so we we gonna go over that footage. We gonna <laughs> review that blueprint right there. Yeah, maybe the chicken. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Francis talking O and O, man. Oh, no, no, oh it's easy to talk. Oh no, Hell on the yeah. talking about oh COVID and if all you this. know if you know how bad I want to get in there, you wouldn't even talk like that, boy. Right. You better relax. How you want to get in there? Where's <laughs> your training? Doing, for how, you? Yeah, but what's stopping you then, Francis? Pardon me. Gonna be what's stopping no, you? You're I don't be do, in Dallas, right? No, I don't do nothing until I'm prepared, brother. Sorry, uh, don't okay. care who like oh, it, who man. don't like it, because I don't oh, like I don't like excuses. You know what you don't do without preparing? You. You don't stop talking with Albert Pan, so I don't know why you can't fight with Albert Pan. You keep no, talking like, to what, what I... Why? Why can't you... Because pre- I was prepare? born prepared to talk, brother. That's why I talk. Yeah. It's okay. Yo, I understand. Funny, funny, <laughs> funny you tell... You said you don't like no excuses, but but the reason that you're not joining Border Wars is an excuse, man. No, no, I'm joining Border Wars. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because you got to remember something. I don't play boxing. When I'm fighting, I don't play. So I'm not yeah. gonna put myself in there. I got to, to put myself in it. I want to make sure that I turn every stone over to make sure I'm prepared. That when I lose, I, I lose. I'm and I got it. kids, bro. And and don't get it twisted. I'm, I'm, I'm stupid here. enough to jump in there and fight was without that? any training. How many no, no, hold excuses? on. No, I'm stupid enough to jump in there and fight without any training. I have to stop myself to be smart. Don't don't play with How me. How many excuses no, but did I you just make? Like, why don't you prepare? Like, didn't you pick the date for the event? And didn't you have like six weeks? Like, no, in? no, because I was quarantined, brother. My dad's Canada is different. We are a lot. Though. Remember, Americans can't come. A lot of people can't come to Canada. So a lot of things over here is is straight shut down over here, brother. <laughs> There's no point well, in it, and, it, one, and it's snowing one. outside, so I can go run in the cold, no problem. Rocky that, it ain't trained in the me run. Then, you know what I'm saying? Rocky trained yeah. in the snow. Get out of here. You could train. Yeah, I know, and he trained inside too. Top, you, you running from the snow, so I don't Bruh, know why you talking. You got a garage. <laughs> train in the garage. Karma Surge trains in the garage. You making yeah. excuses? Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> you making excuses, no, man? No comment on that. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Cruz. Now let's continue on with Cruz because it's his unguarded. 
<laughs> you ducking all kind of smoke, Ness. You waiting for you to get to Florida to work out. Before. Oh, my God. I need how, the heat because I'm good. How am my I, knees how are going to hurt. Listen, how am brother. I ducking, hey, Cruz, Yo, let me, tell you, let me ask you something. Cruise, what does man. your diet it's look like Cruise. from first fight to second fight? Like, what has Smitty changed in your diet? Like, um, are you introducing fasting? Like, how your portion? Like, what has changed? Tell us about that. Oh, actually, uh, Mitty hasn't, um, he hasn't really, can you still hear me? I think it cut off. We hear you. Yeah, you okay. can. Uh, yeah, Mitty hasn't really uh, given me a diet plan, uh, just because I've worked with him so much that I kind of know what I got to eat and, and what I shouldn't eat. Um, so my diet is, is uh, looking, um, Monday through Friday, I only eat fish, basically. Um, I'll eat nothing but fish. I'll have some quinoa and some vegetables. What type, what type uh, of fish? Sorry, sir. What type of fish? Uh, salmon. Okay. Because you know certain fish have different like um, fats or different oils in them. That's why I asked. Sorry. I'm a foodie. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you know, you go with the salmon. Salmon is usually known to be a fattier fish, um, yeah. especially when you go with the belly side of it. So, you know, yeah. you'd have to work a little bit harder to get some of that fat out. So that's why I asked. Oh, is it, that, is it that good fat? That's that good fat. Okay. It's good fat. I, I don't really like salmon myself. So that's why I asked. Yeah. So you don't like it or you do? No, I don't. I like my snapper fish. I'm Jamaican, so I like the snapper fish, you know, oh, whole okay. fish. Yeah. yeah, I'm not going to say I love it, but it's, it's what helps me, you know, drop the weight, for sure. Any, anything, like else that, anything else that you have um, taken out from your diet and has introduced or any switches that, that we can, that, that those out there that can use, maybe? Oh, you know what? You know, I got a little hack. Nobody wants to do it, though. I even challenged Coach Mitty. I drink a scoop of uh, turmeric every day. Um, it's uh, it's not one cup. It's uh, one teaspoon of, of turmeric. Oh, it's, it's, it's disgusting. How do you get a tablespoon? I do. I do. Yeah, I do the turmeric with the coconut oil and black pepper. Fire. Yeah, yeah but you you do a tablespoon or you just yeah, sprinkle no, some? No, a tablespoon mix in oh, coconut okay. oil and black pepper yeah. and drink that. Yes, sir, man. It, it okay, makes it like sir. just. He gets it raw. He gets like the spoon. No, that's not, the the scoop, pepper, 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 he's drink, he's drinking. He's drinking whatever. Knock it down. I'm not drinking anything other than the he's coconut not drink, oil. He's not drinking either. He's just taking a powder and just like drop it in his mouth like the turmeric. Crazy. Who's? You didn't wash down the powder? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I gotta wash. No, it has to. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm on, saying. Man. But the, my my water or whatever you're talking about is just the coconut yeah. oil. So you know, if you don't drink that fast, it just seizes right back up <laughs> into yeah. oil. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I love it though. Anything Yo, else? I mean, any fruits or anything that breaking you Breaking news, breaking news, man. Breaking news. Hate to be the bearer of bad news. <laughs> that was Ringwalk Danny. He said he just tried to call you, Cruz. What's what's going on, man? He, he, he's what pulling happened? out of what? He's pulling out. Air Force uh, canceled his. His vacation time due to COVID. They don't want him going because of COVID and his position. This guy wrestling his dog. <laughs> oh, she terrible, bro. She's, yeah. it, she's just too much. Uh, sign about the air force. He wanted to be the one to tell you, but since you ain't answer, he's telling me as the event promoter. And now yeah. we have this situation. Wow. Live in the middle of your unguarded. Ugh. So immediate reaction, man. You know, I mean, for how me, you taking that, man? For Cruz, me, or... my immediate reaction is Ambrose. But the th question is, Ambrose is a guy that doesn't like fighting guys from Texas. You know, he might not want to fight you because you're from Texas because he never wanted to fight White Boy because White Boy was from Amarillo. What does that mean? Like, I, I have fight no clue, man. Texas. I have no clue, man. No clue, man. Like, look, I just offered him someone else, but he said he's around 180. What were you fighting at? 180 or 190? Damn, Cruz. 190. Got... 190. And that's yeah. his weight. Let's see what he says, bro. He's going to say How about no. Francis? Francis is going to be there. <laughs> Francis is going to say there, no. Man. Yo, you want we Cruz to beat me up, man. <laughs> Mini, you hey. he's a killer. <laughs> no, come on, man. You gotta you gotta salvage the card, man. He's you, a killer. Yeah, you gotta be a bear, you you do whatever you, it takes, you, man. You're part of the promotion, Yo, man. You try to get you know, me on a no, highlight cruise. That's listen, what you said. No, 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 listen, I've got an idea. I've got an idea. Would you How rather you not do... take it, Cruz, because you no. don't know Ambrose? You don't want to take it last minute, right? Yeah, it's uh, strange too. We don't even know. I, I wanna I wanna think about it. Um I'll talk no, to you I about mean, it he behind didn't, the he scenes. Didn't, he, he didn't say yeah either though. He didn't say yeah either. Yeah. I just text him right now. But what was your idea, Mitty? My idea, like no, I am serious, and hear me out. Like, you know, Francis really uh, yeah, 
we do something in exhibition, no knockouts. As soon as there's a cut, <laughs> we start we the stop fight. The fight. No judges. Hey, we no gonna put 20, 20 you ounce both gloves. Get a belt. You both get a belt. 20, 20 ounce gloves. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know? 20 you ounce know? gloves, too, instead of 16. <laughs> 20 ounce gloves. There you go. Yo, now I know Biddy don't like me for real. Who's going to be so mad daddy in there? He's going to be like, oh, you Francis, yeah, right. <laughs> Francis, they saying get in there and save the show, man. They, 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 get in there. Get in this swag, man. <laughs> yo, yo, Danny's nah, in the chat. Who, who Danny's gonna, in the chat. Think about it, though. That's crazy. The shout out to Ringwalk Danny, though, and not oh. being able to make it, man. I'm pretty sure he trained pretty hard, you know what I'm saying, for Damn. this whole time. And, yeah. we, we, we're laughing like that, but, like, you know, I, I, I'm looking at Cruz, and, you know, I had no idea it feels like to have, yeah. like, uh, Bro, a Bro, 40 kind of, miles? Like, you can't get those 40 that. miles back, man. The only good thing about that is that you're in great shape. But, yeah, this is this is honestly... This is why I ain't taking fights, man. Dudes got to pay me 500 collateral, man. I can't go through that shit. I'm not doing 40 fucking miles. I'm going to stop eating all my cereal and sweets, and then you pull out. No disrespect to anybody, but that's crazy. You know what I mean? I, 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 wow. So now, you know, we're really, um, there's We got to scramble. No, there's nothing. There's nothing. I, I, I highly doubt Ambrose takes it. Then even yourself, you're in a you're in a bad position where it's like you think Mario would want to take it or no? I mean, he always said that it was going to be a fight with him and him and Cruz, but Check, uh, ask him uh, Mario Mario is Mario is team uh, Ness Heyman, man. I need Mario. He need he, he can't go in there with Cruz, man. Cruz is going to be five fights in, man. Uh oh, uh oh. Maybe we have a silver line. Ambrose asked. When you need to know by, I mean, I guess before Saturday. Cut it off. When you need to know by, Cruz, live on air, the, the illest unguarded. Love it. Cruz, when would you like to know by? If he, he said, wants I to take know, it's kind of cutting off. His wife, I like. So Ambrose is saying that he might be doing it, but when do you need to know by? What's your deadline for him to, to give you an answer? Oh, Ambrose, man, I got to think about it myself. Um, so what's so, your deadline? Um, I would say I would say midweek, man, Wednesday. Oh, that's late. That's yeah. late. You 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 want to know by by Sunday? Like, yeah, that's late. We want to know. Yeah, <laughs> Sunday the latest. Yeah, well, I mean, you can think about it and talk to whoever you have to talk to, Wednesday. and then right. I guess you can come back to uh, to Nest by I don't know Saturday Sunday to see if that's what you want to do, right? So. Yeah, well, I got I got Ambrose's number. I, I'll reach out to Ambrose, and we All see right. what uh where we can go from there. But yeah, it's it's uh it's not the news that I want to hear, of course, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Because I get I get all excited to come back, but it puts you it, it puts it puts it you in a in a bad wars. it puts you in a bad situation, man. Um, where where it's like your first border wars, where now it's like you got to take a, sh- a last minute fight, uh. I don't want to serve you, Mario. It's like you said, he's coming off a loss. Ambrose yeah. is the best option. At least he's 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 undefeated with no wins or losses. You know what I mean? Uh, Mario, you know, I was trying to put him in with I mean because I mean had a common no opponent with Kim. <laughs> and and then Cruz wants Kim. Yo, nah, for real. no, Cruz wants you. They want you to step in last minute. <laughs> What's up, Francis? <laughs> Yo, oh, hold on. so you yo, ducking that bros? That's what you doing, huh? Look at JD. I see you ducking that bros. I got yo, you. JD said. I see you. JD <laughs> said. Y'all got the same record, man. Y'all got the same record. JD said this happens in real boxing. Two days notice. It does, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, two days notice, those what? opponents, like, get something to, you know, to come and do a little something, man. They don't come there to wait, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know that, that <laughs> like that's, that that's, that, that's, the, that's the part that he didn't tell you. Like, Yo, listen, man, yo, we got some super chats yeah, that we didn't get to before. Max Rodriguez came in with Eric is the godfather of Team Texas. He and OG. Uh, Shout out to Anthony Edwards. So Anthony Edwards is super chat. Sorry to hear that, Cruz. I was looking forward to seeing you back in the ring. You're the hardest hitter I've ever faced. Word, man, that's crazy. Look you at. Yo, man, see, um, this is this is the 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 the, the issue with boxing, man. Yeah. 
Issue with boxing, man. Every everything you know, and anything can happen last minute, bro. Yeah, um, yeah. Everything you know, everything works in, in mysterious ways. I kind of spoke to Francis. You know, I got I kind of have a little situation going on myself as well, Ooh. and I won't be cleared um, until maybe Monday or Tuesday. Um, you know, if I'll be able to participate. So what? So yeah. So Francis, so, you kept this from me, dog. I thought I thought you was my man. Yo, me and you, we were supposed to be. Yo, what nah, the f- we we took we together, but you gotta remember something. At the same time, I'm a man's man, and he asked me to do something in confidentiality, and I held my part of the deal. Wow. It was about time yeah, for you. You was gonna know. Loop. You don't you don't think how much you hurt me to not say? Ah, I gotta tell. Nah, 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 nah it's all I good. can't. But, but at the end of the day, we wanted to make sure we resolved it first. Listen, but uh, I wanted Cruz good. to do the honors of telling you what's no, good, you know? No, no, it's all good because that makes me feel better in the sense that at least Cruz isn't devastated. If he himself kind of was iffy, uh, you yeah. know, I, that's what hurts me more is you going through everything you went through and expecting a fight and then not be. But if you yourself were slightly reluctant or had your mind somewhere, that's beautiful because I feel less ashamed. And 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 yeah. and disappointed for you, you know. I, I don't want any of you guys to go through six, eight weeks of training, losing weight, paying fines, all this stuff, and then no fight. That's horrible, you know. That's not what I want. So, you know, that's kind of sweat off my back if you was already thinking of pulling out. But uh, yeah, and I mean, it's it's not it's not it's not. I don't want it to sound like yo, I'm thinking about pulling out. It's just that um, I'm gonna give you a little bit or something about what's going on. Um, I, I took a, you know a COVID test. And I'm waiting on the results. Um, it's going to be about two days for me to get back the results. I took it today. Um, somebody in my house has a, tested positive. Um, so I got to, you know, get Uh-oh. the results back and, and make sure that everybody. Um, um, I don't want to expose nobody in the event. You know, if nah, I have course, it, I don't want to show up there. But you you must be asymptomatic then. Even Yeah, if I mean, I don't, ha- I don't have any symptoms. Any symptoms. Yeah. Um, but we just found out about it like the day right before Thanksgiving on Wednesday. That's when when we found out about it. So, mm. nah, yeah. listen, understandable, understandable. That's gonna really suck though because I needed you at the event at least. What in the hell? How would that happen? Like you're the you're, <laughs> you're the guy. Yeah, no, we'll figure something out. We'll figure something out. Without um, you, what are we gonna do? We got Matt Machine Gun Garcia who says crew. Hold on, before that, before that, you got Big Supermax says brother says Francis step in. Matt and Danny took the fight on 15 minutes notice, That's and right. Danny had no f- training, so jump in there and be great, champ. Be great. And then now Matt comes back with the Cruz. I owe you lunch. That's oh what, man, that's what Matt said. But yo, that's I true, man. It. That's true, bro. Ringwalk Danny the night before was on my Instagram, drunk in front of my my hotel room, crying about Canelo getting the win. So yeah, man, or not getting the win. Something weird. I know he was drunk, but then he jumped in there. So no, but let's let's not peer pressure. Yo, um, yo, yo. Francis to get his first L, man. I think Supermax is talking about like uh, super chat. I don't know if uh, y'all we read them, them already. Super chat. Yeah, we read them. Yeah, we read them. All right, all right. We all got right. them. We was running a little behind, but we got them. Cool, cool, cool. So, um, yeah, man, that's uh, everything kind of unfolding and kind of you know, I mean, right here live on you know, the unguarded, which is right. which is pretty dope. Good content. Yeah. So <laughs> we, we we pretty much waiting to see what's next. And Good stuff content. Now, you know? He said, "Good content. We gave you, we gave you the buildup of a of a comeback of one of our most declarated fighters. Then, then we gave you the live disappointment of his fight being canceled, and then we left you in suspense with whether or not he's got COVID. I mean, let's talk about some good content. I'm trying to tell you, (laughs) stay tuned because we don't know what's next. Stay tuned. We're going live with the COVID results, man. What in the hell?" (laughs) Damn, yeah, bro. Jose, that's right. I like what Matt said. Fly out, Jose, and meet Cruz in the ring, man, where it all took place two years ago. Right. Man. What was it? Yeah, it's about two years at this point now, man. Let's go, Thank Jose. You, now, Jose's, Jose's, Jose's on fake lockdown. He talked about he can't fly out. Meanwhile, Francis flying out every every chance he get. Man, Jose, you faking it out there, man. Oh, yeah. Jose don't want to be a faker, man, with his fake doctor. Nah, nah, he didn't tell me. He did tell me he he can't deal with the quarantine. Can't yeah. deal with the quarantine. Not everybody can stay home for fourteen days, man. But isn't it voluntary yeah. for y'all? It's not voluntary. Um, 
Nah. It's got to be. It's not. Nah, it's not. Man, I don't know. Unless man. you want a $10,000 fine, then you can call it voluntary. <laughs> oh. I mean, like, no, but seriously, though, like, so the fights are dropping off the cards and everything. Yeah, but we have, we, we have fighters out there, though. Like, we have, like, Mario that'll be there, not busy. We have Francis there, not busy. <laughs> there's got to be, there's gotta be something that can be no done, then. Huh? Like Jordan, you, you versus Mario? Jordan going to be there. Jordan going to jo- be there. Jordan be there, I'm sure. Like He likes to take fights with one leg. And <laughs> I, 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 I think I, I think he fancies his chances against you, he said. So, I don't know, man. Like, against who? You. And so who? That's what he keeps saying. And that's, Jordan. Jordan he, Baker. Is he crazy? Uh, jo- Jordan Baker. Oh, yeah. no, no. Jordan might do. Francis, man, let's get it on, though. Fran- he's crippled, Fran- man. He's got the... He's got hear, like, you, yo, Francis is the biggest liar, dog. <laughs> <laughs> My man, he got fights at eight different weight classes, man. He tripping. Everybody calling out Francis. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yo, I'd love to take... Ness's body, like, real. I might have to try and beef up and gain some weight for that one, man. Maybe 20, late 2021. We'll see. We'll see how I do my first bouts. I can't look past my opponents because I'm a true champion, you know? Bruh, I got to look at my opponent. You lose. Who's your opponent? Let me tell stainless. you something. I got Stainless as my first opponent. Oh, Stainless. Let me tell yeah, you something. Stainless he, got problems with me, man. You already 20, lost. You, know? you already lost. If you're not a natural, if you're not a not- you, you already lost because... Stainless already started working out. The minute that call hung up, he he joined the gym. That don't mean nothing. That don't that mean does, nothing. I'm gonna tell does, you about it. it don't mean does, nothing. Look at me dead in my eye. It don't mean nothing, bro. <laughs> it don't mean nothing, Ness. You're not all right. I feel you. you. Do what you do your best promoting, but that don't mean nothing. I'm keeping it real. It's it gonna come down to will. What, what do you mean, will what? It's Every, gonna come down to will. Everybody got has stronger will. will. Everybody has will. It comes down to the scorecards, man. Yeah, first to two. Don't forget, it's first to two. It's the first to two. <laughs> Damn. If it makes it to two. Yeah, so, it so Cruz, now that you let the cat out the bag, that kind of makes me feel a slightly optimistic in the sense that you said you have to think about it to take the Ambrose fight because you were really saying, I need to find out what's my results to the COVID, and that's why you didn't jump yeah. on. So, yeah, so yeah. you saying... You would take it if you clean, or you still need to also think about the fight. Well, I would take it if I'm clean, and also if uh, Ambrose agrees to the to the weight to the weight uh, class that I'm going to be coming in. You know, because I think he he wanted to fight at a uh, 180 or something like that. Nah, he he was trying to fight at 175, 180, but he's 190 right, right now. But he's 190, yeah. so you know. But yeah, man. Yeah, I, I, would, guess... I would take it. All right, all right. Well, that's good news, man. That's good news. We got something to look forward to. We want to hope that you are health, healthy, and uh, you know, and that you pass your COVID. And then, if that's the case, you know, I guess we, we definitely want you on the card, man. I was, you know, I ain't gonna front (laughs) secretly. Secretly, as a competitor, I'm kind of happy because now you don't get to get that fifth one. And we still tied at four fights each. Yeah, so, I'm a jump friend. Yeah, but you see how he was cheering for you. Now he's hating. Look at no, this crew. He's cheering for you. Now he's like, yeah. No, because remember, even in the beginning, I said that I was, you know, slightly jealous that you was about to have the be the most active. And now here we are again. And it's like, wait, he might not fight. Maybe he right. won't be the most active. You know what I'm saying? I want, I want that title too. But now, nah, I'll take man. somebody off the street, man, for me to get my fifth fight. That's what I got to do. <laughs> I'll for find real. somebody. But I think that's all the questions. Francis, you got anything on Coach Mitty? Uh, that is definitely all the questions on his unguarded. No, nothing from me, man. That was pretty good until we got the bad news, man. Yeah, man, that sucked. The bad good news, because you know what? We, we still got We still just still the door there open. For wait, something amazing yeah. to happen. Wait, so. I think we got another question here. You didn't, we didn't answer. Uh, big casual, not to be confused with Enrique, casual fan. He says, "What's good, SOG? Do you think that there should be a Border Wars Hall of Fame? And if yes, do you think that you having the most fights in Border Wars, you could make it in one day? Well, you definitely answered you that. Answer that. Yeah, you answered yeah. that. You said first ballot. That's right. Talk that talk. First ballot, man. Most active, been at the most board awards after maybe Ness and Doomy, I want to say, since they, uh, you know, participate as judges and commentators. But yeah, man, I, 
Yeah, first ballot, no doubt. Yeah, man. Cruz, no social media, right? I only got Facebook, um, Eric Cruz, and I got Twitter, King Cruz. Um, but that, yeah, that's it. Damn, you got Twitter, uh, Cruz? Yeah, I've been having Twitter for like 15 years, man. I got it when it just came out. <laughs> uh, well, there you have it. Eric Cruz, uh, we have Unguarded's lined up for, I think we're doing Supermax on Monday, right? Let me double check here. Yep. Monday, yep, that's right. Yes, 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 yes. I got you. I checked it. Big Supermax Monday at 3 p.m. And then we have Demarcus for Surefire D scheduled at 5 p.m. And he is upset, ladies and gentlemen. He's been hearing everything White Boy has been saying. He wanted to schedule the interview for the day. He was like, yo, Ooh. Ness, let's do that unguarded today. That white boy talking mad shit. I was actually going to take it light on him. Now I'm going to fuck his ass yeah. up. And I'm Dang like, no. I'm like, no, wait a minute. We got to well, schedule it. What do you say he's going to do? He's going to do what to what? Oh, he's going to do the do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Pause that, Ness. Come on, man. Whatever. You guys are funny, man. You guys are funny. Oh, man. Ah, Vinny's stupid. Yeah, I said, what? <laughs> hey, man. That's suspicious, I, man. All right, so his actual words were... His actual words were this white boy talking mad-ish. It was gonna... I was gonna take it easy on him. Now I'm gonna beat the dog-ish out of him. I'm ready to do uh-huh. my own guard. <laughs> How seven? And I said, oh. no, seven is too soon, man. We got to put your post out there. We got to put your, your questions. You know, we got to get the questions from the people, man. So uh, exactly. we're going to be doing two Unguarded's on Monday. Plus, we got a Border Wars show scheduled for Saturday at 11 a.m. It is fight week in a few week, few days, man. So, uh, yeah, another episode. Cruz, Mitty, Francis. Till the next one. Till the next one. You already know, man. Catch you on the next one. Thank you to the man upstairs for another one. SOG, appreciate you. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate y'all, man. Actually. All All right. Peace.